Hi, this is Dave, and welcome to To The Table, a series of videos where I review and discuss various board and card games, looking at them from a family perspective. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Caverna from Mayfair Games. Now, this is a worker placement game for one to seven players in which you take on the role of a dwarf family who is uh, going to be working to clear out their cave um, in order to build improvements there and also to uh, clear out and develop the land that's just outside in order to uh, be able to produce food and livestock. Uh, you're going to be scoring points for all of your efforts and whoever has the most points is the winner. Let's take a look at this game and a little bit of how it's played and I'll come back and I'll give you my thoughts. Okay, I have Caverna set up for three players, and I want to quickly show you all the components that come in the game because there is a lot of stuff. Uh, first, let's start over here, and I want to mention that you see this wooden insert here, this organizer. This is the cavern organizer that is uh, produced by thebrokentoken.com. It does not come with Caverna. It can be purchased separately, and I'll talk more about that um, when I review the game at the end. So uh, we're going to have a number of different types of resources that come with this game. Uh, in the top here we have some sheep, we have our wild boar, we have donkeys, we have our cattle. Uh, then we have some wood, we have stone, vegetables, and grain. Down at the bottom we have some dogs, we have rubies, we have ore, and then we have our food tokens. Uh, next, in this small removable tray here, on the left-hand side, there are going to be our uh, gold coins here. There's going to be values of 1 and 2, and there's some other ones that are worth 10. And then these other columns here, these are our weapon strength markers, and they have different numbers on there, as you see the number 3 there. And uh, as we forge weapons and we gain experience, the strength of our weapons is going to increase, and we'll be able to uh, keep track of those on our um, on our workers. Next there's a number of tiles that come in the game and there are single tiles and there are also double tiles here and they will be placed on our game boards to make improvements on either our caves or our fields. Now next we have the game board here itself and it's uh, quite large and this is where all of the action is going to be taking place to uh, place our workers in order to gain resources and perform specific actions. And it's kind of a modular board, and there will be sections that will be added depending upon the number of players. So if we look at this one here, this will tell me for three players I'm going to add this particular board that has strip mining, imitation, and forest exploration. And I have this game uh, board already seated, meaning that uh, at the beginning of a round, particular resources are going to come out. And so if we look here, uh, wherever we see this, uh, the arrow on there, for example here, wood gathering, means that one wood will come out here. And so each round, um, if nobody claims it, there will be an additional wood that will be added. Now there's some of them that are going to be uh, a little bit different and will have different resources coming out. For example here, a strip mining, um, if it is unoccupied, the first thing that's going to come out is ore, and then the next one will, uh, if there, nobody claims it, there will be a stone that will be placed there, and they will just accumulate till somebody takes it. Now over on the side here um, is going to be additional actions will be coming out as we progress through the different rounds of the game, and there'll be different stages. And if we notice here, there's these green marks here, and this is going to determine when the harvests are. And then one thing with Caverna, there are going to be these additional seven tokens that have been shuffled up and placed on the board. And there will be um, harvests after each round, and there's going to be uh, some variation as to the type of harvest here. So some of the coins, if we flip these over, will be a normal harvest here. And some other ones, if we flip them over, will have this red question mark. And then depending upon when you start getting them, it will tell you, you start placing them here. For example, the first one will be no harvest. And then there's going to be a couple of partial harvests that will take place. And so you can keep track of them on this card here. Now, uh, over here is going to be a number of tiles where you're going to be able to uh, purchase them and make improvements, uh, in particularly in your cave. And so there's lots of different things here. So we have our different types of dwellings, and then we also have some certain rooms that are almost like uh, there are going to be other improvements that are going to give you different benefits here. We also have almost like these occupation type tiles here that are going to give you specific jobs. 
and then we have um, some more things here like being a supplier and then we also have different parlors here that are going to be able to be built here for example here we have the weaving parlor or we have the beer parlor and uh, some chambers and just other different rooms that are going to uh, give you different abilities or help you to score points during the game. Now this is the selection of tiles for the full game which is a whole bunch of tiles. And if I flip these over there is a simpler version of the game that has a lot less to choose from. And then finally we have our game boards here where all the action is going to take place and if you notice here it's split in half half of it is going to be uh, a forest here and then it's your cave and they're two-sided so you can play on the normal side or you can flip it over and you can choose to uh, play it as if it were in the dark so you have uh, it's the same game board just one of them can you can play it as night or in daytime each player is going to start off with two workers that will start off in their uh, their simple their dwelling here, and there's one open space here, and then we will place the remaining three workers and our stables in uh, reserve, and then we'll determine who the first player is, and they will take the first player token with one food, the second player has one food, and the third player has two food. So now that I have the game set up, let me show you how Caverna is played. Okay, at the start of each round, we're going to be uh, revealing one card from this deck and we're going to be placing them in the game board here, filling up the different spaces for um, places where we can task our workers to do actions. And so after the 12th round, then when the last card is placed, we'll have that round there and then the game will be over. Uh, quickly to show you how the game is played, we're going to be uh, taking our workers. Uh, we have two of them. We'll be able to assign them one at a time, uh, starting with the first player and placing them on the various places on the board in order to take action. Some of them will gain us just normal resources and other ones will uh, allow us to take action. So for example here, if I place this on this uh, excavation here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this stone resource and then it um, place it in front of me and then it tells me that I can place uh, one tile in my cave essentially I'm going to clear things out so I have a choice with excavation I can place the tile here where it has uh, one tunnel and one cavern or I can flip it over and I can put uh, choose to put two caverns in there now, depending on how you place them, once you place them, that's it. You won't be able to move them. And certain um, improvements are going to be dependent upon if you have a tunnel or a, um, a cavern. So for the sake of this here, let's zoom in our player board here. We're going to place two caverns. And we're going to start making improvements in our, in our uh, cave here. And so we have two spaces already. And so I think what we're going to do is we're going to place this down here, just like this. Now this one particular spot here, as soon as we cover, as soon as we improve on this, we will gain a food token. So we'll grab one and put it in our supply here. So uh, this is one of the actions that we can do is make it, we're going clearing this out and ready to make an improvement. Um, other players are going to be able to, to uh, task their workers too, and they won't be able to occupy the same space that a worker has, um, has already taken unless they choose to use this imitation here where they can pay for food to use an action space that's occupied by an opponent except the starting player. The starting player can place it wherever they want. So um, for example here now the the blue player may decide to go over here and they will uh, gain one they'll gain one wood and then they'll also gain a vegetable too. So we'll place this in front of them here and the third player maybe they decide they want to go logging over here and they're going to take the three wood and one of the things here now in this particular space that uh, is unique to Caverna is that now they'll be able to undergo an expedition and they have different levels here unfortunately this dwarf will not be able to go on this expedition because he has not forged a weapon yet which we will go um, get to in just a second so uh, over the course of the turns, we're going to be placing these, uh, placing our workers and gathering up uh, resources. Uh, we're going to go over here, we'll go ore mining, and we'll gather up this ore here with the red player. And uh, we'll put these in front of us. The blue player will 
choose to take the starting player here and they will also gain two ore. So we'll, we'll just take them from the tray. We'll put them in front of the second player. And then the third player here, what they're going to choose to do is they will take this ruby here and put the ruby in front of them. Now rubies are going to be used to uh, kind of as a wild uh, and they can be used to purchase a uh, single tile um, to make improvements on your gaming board. So anyway, so I've completed the first round here and so what's going to happen then is the next card is going to be uh, flipped up and all the workers are going to go home. They're going to go back home here, back home there, back home there on their game boards. Uh, next I'm going to go ahead and seed the game board here starting up here. Nobody took strip mining so now instead of an ore we put a stone there. We're going to add a stone to the drift mining, stone to excavation, a food for the starting player here. Um, we'll add a ruby here. I should have had a sheep from this first one and so now we're going to add a second sheep for sheep farming for the first round here. Um, we'll add our logs here, three for logging here, and two for the ore mining. We'll add um, one wood down at the bottom here for forest exploration, one for wood gathering, one for clearing, and a food token for sustenance. And then we're going to flip over this next card here which is going to be blacksmithing. Now this is one thing that I want to talk about here for Caverna is um, this blacksmithing. So let me scroll in here and if I place a worker here, depending on what's going to happen, I'm going to be able to spend my ore in order to forge a weapon. So starting off here, if I were to put two, uh, I will start off with a strength two weapon and what I'm going to do is I will go through and look for a strength two uh, token, which I'm not going to use at this point because as soon as I go on an expedition, I can take the weapon that I forged and I can immediately change it up one level, increase its level. So now this is going to be a level three weapon and I just place it on top of my, my dwarf now and he is now armed. And he will be able to undergo a level three uh, quest. Okay, once I've forged my weapon here and I have a strength, uh, weapon strength of three, I'll be able to go on a level three expedition, which means that I'm going to come back with three different loot items. And the way that I'm going to determine what items I'm going to come back with, I'm going to look at this expedition loot card here. And depending upon the strength of my weapons, uh, I can choose items or actions to come back with. Uh, and now, so with uh, level three, I'll be able to come back with three different loot items. So I can choose from the minimum strength value or less what I'm gonna come back with. So I'm going to ha go ahead and choose a donkey, a stone, and a wood. And what I'm going to do is I'll put those resources in front of me and then I'm going to take the donkey and I'll place it in uh, the entry level dwelling space because there's room for two dwarfs and one pair of animals. Now one thing that I want to show you um, in this game too that's different is that all of these tiles over here essentially rep uh, replaced uh, the cards that you would see in Agricola for minor improvements in occupations and so they're available for purchase and to improve your your cave and uh, caverns that you live in and so uh, in order to do this the first thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to clear out spaces for example over here I have um, a space already placed here but uh, when I had placed this uh, double tile here and cleared out some spaces I created uh, an opening or a cavern of which I'll be able to uh, place an improvement on. So if I purchase one of these um, spaces when I take the appropriate action I can go ahead and I can place this here just like this and I'll be able to place it right over that and now I have room to expand my family. And this is going to be the same for uh, a couple different other places here as we are uh, making some developments. Maybe I wanted to put a tunnel here and um, have another tunnel here like this. And then I can do certain things like I can build an ore mine 
So there's different ways now that these tiles will stack and there's minimum uh, requirements as to how they're going to uh, be able to be developed over the course of the game. The same thing is going to happen on the uh, forest side of the game board. So if we look down here, uh, we're going to have to do some clearing first. So uh, for example here, if I did this, I'd be able to have a field and then an open space here. Now one thing I wanted to show you um, is if we notice here, there's a couple spaces that are one is right here and one is up here and those are wild boar and as soon as we make an improvement here um, and we clear that out we're going to gain that boar and um, so we can put it in the house to hold on to it or one of the other things that we can do that's pretty cool is we could put it in a space and if we have a dog there the dog will essentially keep this this boar from running away and we can have dogs out there until we have uh, put some fences up and so the more dogs that we have the more um, animals that we can have on a space and so that's kind of a, a neat thing too that we can have over the course of the game now we also once we have a couple of clear open spaces like this another thing that we can do is we can uh, build fences and we can fence things in uh, other other um, Actions that we're going to have are going to be similar to Agricola where we can choose to plant things and when we do that we'll have the additional, uh, we'll have the additional um, pieces that will be stacked on top of it just like this and then um, do the same thing as in the game Agricola. Uh, there will be harvests of course where we're going to have to pay food uh, food tokens to pay for each member of our family uh, but there are these partial ones that are going to uh, come along and some of them we may only have to pay like one food per dwarf instead of two or sometimes we're going to skip something so it kind of throws a unique twist in the game having these uh, rubies are going to allow us to use things as a kind of a wild and we'll be able to buy these single tile improvements that uh, we'll be able to go in our game boards. So over the course of the game we're going to be working to uh, develop things, we're going to have our livestock that are going to be acquiring, for example we'll start having some sheep here, we'll have some, we'll, we'll be able to build some stables uh, so we can hold more spaces and uh, one of the things in this game is that to um, acquire cattle uh, the only way we can acquire cattle is by buying them so we'll have to spend actual um, we'll have to use some money and resources in order to purchase cattle so um, these are going to be the hardest to obtain and so the uh, livestock aspect of this game is going to be more challenging so again overall uh, in this game we're going to be spending a bunch of turns tasking your workers going out taking various actions to build improvements uh, on your game board or in your caves trying to maximize uh, your space in order to gain the most victory points after the twelfth round the uh, player with the most victory points will win the game and that is just a brief uh, taste of how to play Caverna All right. Let's talk about Caverna, and there's a lot to talk about in this game because there is a lot of games. So let's uh, let's get right to it. And let me start off with talking about the production quality of this game. Uh, there are a lot of pieces that came with this game, a lot of cardboard, and they all came in sheets and they all had to be punched out. And I will say that these guys punched out perfectly. I did not have one issue with uh, popping any of these tiles out. I mean, there were sheets of them. There was probably a stack of sheets about this thick. Everything uh, punched out just fine. The little uh, coin pieces, they all popped out. I did not have any issues with any extra paper hanging off of them or pulling any paper off these these tiles. And they're, they're thick enough material that I don't have any issues with, with uh, warping. Lots of really cool wooden pieces that come with this game. So you have all of your animal meeples and you have your veggie meeples and then you also have the little uh, rubies and the ore pieces that come with this game as well. So, uh, so you have your cast of all those little characters that come in the game. And of course you have all of your, uh, your worker pieces here, your dwarfs, and you have your stables. <clears throat> One thing that uh, I kind of found an issue with was color selection you have seven player uh, colors for this game here's the blue player here's the teal player 
and they are very, very similar. And so when you have them out on the game board, it's very, very confusing to tell who's who. So I think they could have used uh, a different color uh, for that uh, for one of the player pieces. So um, overall, though, I didn't, uh, I you know, for component quality, I that's uh, that's kind of. Uh, it's not minor, but it's not major either. I think that they could have made a better decision with the color choice there. But overall, the pieces and production quality of this game is super, super high. Um, <clears throat> getting into the the gameplay, this has been one of the uh, most difficult games for me to come up with a review for because um, I'm I've been on the fence for the game. I'm still kind of on the fence, and so um, I feel that I can. Um, I can tell you my thoughts on the game and where I stand. Um, you know, my responsibility as a reviewer is uh, to serve the consumer as well as the publisher by giving my opinion of the game and my thoughts. And so that's what I'm going to do, and I'm being honest about it. So let me uh, start off with talking about uh, what I do like about the game, and then I'm going to talk about what I don't like about the game. Uh, first of all, things that I do like about it. <clears throat> I like the idea of having two-sided game boards so that you can kind of change the overall look. You can play um, basically at night. Um, it's a little bit difficult when you're playing though to see what the words are, but essentially here's where you start off and then you can build out from here opposed to being in the daylight. And then you also have uh, some of these game pieces over here that you have the regular side here with all of these tile options, but if you want to play a simpler game, you flip it over and you have about half of the number of tiles. And so it's going to, uh, you can play a simpler game, uh, especially when you're learning to play the game. So uh, I do like the fact that you do have a, um, essentially a progressive learning system for this game. So I do like that and I do like the two-sided uh, boards here. Um, I like... Uh, some of the mechanics in the game, I like the uh, the idea of having to clear things out first before you can make improvements. So it's like a uh, you've got a progressive uh, way to develop things. For example, here if we have uh, if you had two tiles next to each other, you've got some fields here and you've got this open pasture here. But later on, you can go on and um, with one of your actions, you can essentially place this on top, and now you have a fenced-in area. And so, um, so you have some tiles that are going to stack. And the same thing is going to happen inside the, um, inside the, the cave. You're going to have certain tunnels and uh, certain caverns, and certain things are going to require that you develop your cave a specific way because uh, once you change, or once you place those tiles down, that's, that's it. And so um, you have to be mindful of knowing uh, if you want to put specific improvements in there, how the layout is going to be. So um, there's so it does challenge you with some thinking and a little bit of forethought uh, for the game. And so I so I like that idea. Um, <clears throat> I like the idea of how the harvests work with this game. Um, you have a few rounds where you can essentially build up some of your food resources, and then when you start getting into your harvests, um, they start coming They're every round. And um, so some of them are going to be normal harvests, but then when you get these ones with little red question marks, you have those partial harvests, and they change each time. So one time there's going to be no harvest at all, so you kind of get a buy, which is a nice surprise. And then you have one where you're only going to pay... Uh, one food instead of two for your workers, so it's like a partial harvest, and then there's one where you, you're going to be skipping a certain phase of the harvest phase. So, uh, so it kind of gives the game a little bit of suspense uh, because you're not really sure what type of harvest you're going to be encountering. So it kind of keeps you, uh, keeps a little bit of uh, anticipation going, and it kind of makes you uh, make sure that you're planning to have enough food to feed your family. Um, I like the idea of <clears throat> having the cave uh, improvements to, you know, building the different chambers and the different rooms, and then you have certain occupations and, and certain types of dwellings uh, that can be placed in there um, because, uh, you know, it replaces the uh, having to worry about managing a hand like when you play um, Agricola. So uh, I like the idea of having the options that are out there and, um, you know, 
it gives you something to shoot for if you're going to play a specific strategy to play through. So I, I like the idea of having those out on the game board, and I also like the fact that you know you can play with all of the tiles out there, or you can play a um, a less intimidating game with less tiles that are out there. <clears throat> Uh, I like some of the new uh, ideas with the uh, some of the livestock now and being able to use dogs out with some of your animals to keep them uh, from running away if you don't have a fenced in area. And I also like that um, when you start building the mines you can have donkeys in there and too, too so that kind of uh, helps out a few things. A uh, couple other things that I do like about this game is I like the fact that uh, you don't have to have a cooking hearth in order to convert uh, like your animals and things into food. You can convert them at any time. And so it seemed like when you play Agricola, it's always a race to see who's going to get the best deal on a, uh, on a cooking piece so that you can convert stuff into food, where here you can just convert it at any time. And uh, down in the bottom, <clears throat> there's a handy little reference here that will tell you what uh, you can convert and into how much so uh, it's kind of uh, so I like that mechanic and the other thing that I do like about this game is the uh, challenge with managing the animals in this game uh, you can get sheep really really easily in here that's and uh, that's fine um, you can get some donkeys in there too um, but when it comes down to getting wild boar there's only two spaces that you can get them on the board. So you've got one here and one down here. So when you have them, you have to um, make sure that you have some place to stick them because uh, if they run away, um, or you don't have a dog to keep them there, or if you're forced to convert them into food, uh, you, you're not going to be able to have them breed uh, if you do it too soon. And so... Uh, you're going to not be um, having to, uh, a way for them to reproduce and you will not be able to get points at the end of the game and you'll be penalized for them. And the other thing is with the cattle, the only way you can get cattle is to buy them. So there's no um, action space for you to go and say, oh, I'm going to place a worker here. He's going to go to the market and come home with a cow. It doesn't work that way. You, can, um, you have to buy them. So managing the animals in here becomes more challenging and it kind of brings that element of the game uh, a little bit more forefront for you to be able to score points. So, uh, so, I, so I like that. So those are the things that I like about the game. And so it kind of adds uh, uh, some fresh elements for me to the game. <clears throat> but there are um, a few things that I don't like about the game and, that, and they're uh, essentially the fundamental uh, things that make this game stand out uh, from Agricola, which is its predecessor. First of all, uh, let me talk about the number of players for this game. Now, it's cool you can have a solitaire version of this game, so you can play by yourself. But this can go up to seven players, and when I think seven players, I'm thinking party game, and Caverna is not a party game. There's, um, And uh, you're going, if you decide to be crazy enough to play with seven players, you're going to be at the table for a very, very long time, especially um, if you have people who have a playing style that tends to be more of analyzing and overthinking everything because there is so many choices on here, of things that uh, to build and options to do that uh, somebody can suffer from analysis of paralysis very easily. And with seven players, you can write a, uh, you can write a complete short story uh, between your turn between your turns and so what's going to happen is with that much downtime people are going to get bored and they're not going to want to play they're not going to want to play all the way through so I think that um, five should be the maximum we play I've played with five players and we were playing for over three hours and so um, by the time I was done um, I had my fill so um, at, you would increase the playing time even more with uh, two more players so I don't really recommend that um, <clears throat> now I said that I like the idea of having all of these tiles that you can put out these cave these cave improvement tiles and and they essentially replace the uh, cards that you would be using in in um, Agricola that would be like your minor improvements and your occupations and so you have the tiles that are out there but they're the same tiles that are always out there every game and so um, there's really that's going to kind of limit the replayability of this game uh, because they're the same tiles all the time and 
if you're going to be like a lot of players who play this game to win, uh, you're going to find a specific strategy or certain types of improvements that work, and you're going to always work um, hard to build those same ones over and over again. And so you can kind of fall into this pattern and uh, if you take the game really, really seriously, you're going to you're going to play to win, and you're always going to go after what you think is is going to work for you, like something that that uh, you can consistently do well with. And so uh, you're going to so you're going to um, you can fall into that rut and not really try something new and going after some of the different uh, the different improvements. And so um, so there's some cool things that are in there. And uh, for you to try, um, but the, on the other hand too, that uh, you know they're all out there, but you only have so many turns to be able to develop this whole game board, and so um, you're not going to be able to get a lot of them. So you're going to want to try to find the ones that count. And so um, I kind of feel that um, with the same cards out there, and you kind of falling into the same uh, strategy all the time, that it's going to limit the replayability. And so. I like the idea of it, and it's kind of cool that they're put out there. Um, but I, I like having uh, the variability of having cards in hand and being able to uh, have a different experience every time when I'm playing the game. So I kind of wish that they had done that. <clears throat> and then finally, the uh, the issue with this game that's had me on the fence and has really taken me so long to come up with my opinion is um, the whole idea of forging weapons and going on these expeditions. And so um, I kept going back and forth, and I wanted to like the idea of it. But the more that I play it, I just think it's stupid. Uh, I feel like um, when I play the game that that particular element was just added on as an afterthought. And... Um, and it can present some balance issues because um, if you consistently are going after, it, I mean, one of the things is you're giving up actions to go after um, the spaces to perform these expeditions. But at level three and level four expeditions, you're coming back with a lot of loot. And if you forge some really high powerful weapons, you're going to uh, be bringing back a, a number of resources and you're going to be able to uh, perform some additional actions um, that... Um, maybe you know somebody else had taken a space and some of the ex some of the expeditions will allow you to perform that uh, an action maybe that's already on a space that's been occupied and so it can give you uh, a little bit of an unfair advantage if you're consistently going after that because the more that you do that the more stuff that you're going to accumulate uh, and so to me it just um, I just don't really like that I the idea of the the uh, of how it works. I, I wanted to like the expedition quests, but to me, uh, I I don't I don't like it, and so it affects my overall feeling towards the game. I just I don't like that, and that's the one thing that makes Caverna different from Agricola. And so, uh, I mean, if I had my choice, I would say we're not playing with expeditions. But then, if I'm going to do that, then I might as well just play Agricola because then it's almost the same game, uh, and I and then I would want to have cards in hand too. So. Uh, so those are the things that I don't like about the game, and so so I have this this uh, this you know I've got a lot of nice things to say about it. You know I've got a number of good things, but I have a number of bad things that I say about it. So it's kind of been kind of back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And so <clears throat> here's the here's the bottom line of what I think with this. If you own Agricola, I would I don't say that this replaces it. And I wouldn't be, um, you know, me personally, I wouldn't, I would say that I wouldn't be in a big hurry to run out and buy this if you already have Agricola. The games are, are very, very similar. Um, if you really, I would say, try this one out before you go out and buy it and, and, and mess around with the expeditions and see how you like it. Um, and see what you think about the whole idea of developing your cave and putting the tiles in there but if you look at the if you look at the board you'll kind of get that understanding of well that's all there is to choose from so there's there's no new tiles that are going to be coming out um, during the game they're all right there um, so uh, but if you don't own Agricola then uh, you know the one thing about this game is it is pretty expensive it's it's over eighty dollars to buy this game but there's a lot of pieces I mean if you look at this here's the thickness of the box it's pretty thick I mean that's here's my hand there so there's a lot uh, that comes with the game but um, 
and it's and the game is fine if you don't have the other one and so uh you know and it's and it f becomes really uh, a challenge trying to separate the games because even when you read the rule books uh they reference agricola a lot of times so it's not really agricola 2 but it is in the same uh the same aspect i mean this is caverna and it's got the cave thing so um if you're willing to pay the money um, and you don't own Agricola, then this game I think would be fine if you're liking the, if you want to have that expedition experience. Um, but overall, I don't, I don't really recommend the, the game, I can't recommend this one. Um, it's a pretty hefty price tag, and if you already are playing Agricola, I, I like Agricola more. So that's, that's my opinion of it. Sure, the game mechanics are solid for the most part. I don't like, like I said, I don't like the expedition thing. Um, there's been a lot of thought of um, putting the game together and um, trying to refine the game and trying to have, you know, you have the option of developing the cave thing so you have all those improvement tiles and you've got the randomness now with the harvest tokens, which is pretty cool. So um, I like that. Uh, the other thing is uh, that I want to touch on at the end, there's a couple of things that I do want to say. Uh, number one, it's got a, a really, really good rule book that explains a lot of things in there, so it's very well written and it's good for uh, learning the game. And this game is, uh, it's not difficult to teach, um, especially if you're starting off with the family game. But, and, uh, but the thing is, the uh, storage solution becomes a problem, and so uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to... Uh, review it. the organizer that will fit in the box and so this will hold all the tiles and then you have all the pieces so that one was from the uh, broken token so I have a separate review I'll have the link for that uh, down below you can check that out and um, so if you do have the game this is a great way to sort out those components <clears throat> so looking at this game though from a family perspective um, if you choose to buy this one um, definitely is going to be a game about resource management um, and doing certain things in order to uh, make sure that you can maximize your turn, whether it's making sure that you kind of, uh, if you want to ensure that you are the first player by going after the first player token, or making sure that you can expand your family so that you can take more actions. There's lots of different things that um, this game is going to present for itself. Um, being able to play multiple players is going to allow a larger size family uh, to get together and play this one. However, uh, just be aware that with the extensive uh, playing time with uh, larger parties, that uh, the game is going to take up a large amount of time, and so uh, attention spans can uh, can dwindle on that, and so it may not be a very good ex uh, experience that way. But uh, definitely is going to be a game that's going to be about resource uh, the resource management. So overall with Caverna... Um, I give this one kind of a so-so. Um, I've been on the fence, and and uh, and so um, this one is, you know, it's just it's just there. Um, that's just kind of how it is with this one. Um, I know that there's other people that are wild about this one, but this one is kind of like a, not my cup of tea. I would much rather play Agricola, um, which I think is a better game than this one. So. Anyways, that's my opinion, um, and I would suggest that uh, if you are researching this game that you take the time to look at other uh, reviewers that are out there and um, you know watch a couple different opinions, maybe see a little bit more gameplay, and uh, educate yourself to make the best decision when um, making your purchasing uh, decisions. So, anyways, that's uh, Caverna. And that's it for now, and join me again next time as we take a look at another game and we see how it makes it to the table.